Hello, beautiful human. Thank you so much for clicking on our conversation with Alexander23. We have an entire EP to dissect. Daniel, you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, please leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. Like the video, even if you don't like it. And even if you hate us, what should they do? Like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, oh, and today's conversation with Alexander23 is sponsored by Total Wireless. Total Wireless, do amazing. Let's do this. Hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. Dan's here, and we welcome to the show Alexander23. Hey. Uh, Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an honor to have you here. Um, Again, because you were on the show like a long, long time ago. I was. Little known fact. It's been been too long, though. Yeah, it has been a very long time, and I remember it very distinctly because I remember Rachel Platten came in that day, and y'all had a very cool interaction, and we captured it, and... It was a great interview, and but correct me if I'm wrong. The group is kind of still together in a sense, correct? But not. It's it's not yeah. heydays. It's not heydays anymore. It's in a, it's in a different way. Like the guitar player Andrew is my manager. Tyler, uh, the drummer, is my drummer, and Jesse, the singer, is uh, a co-writer of mine. Someone I you know still work with all the time. So it's like we just kind of switched places and kind of found a more natural way of existing musically together. How do you come to this realization? Like, because it, it had to have been, maybe it was a hard process or maybe it was easy. I don't know. Um, I mean, a few things happened, you know, a few years ago that were kind of like signs like, hey, maybe this is, this is not meant to be a long-term thing. And I'm just happy that we kind of got out when we did, where we're all like still best friends and, and stuff like that. Because you see so many bands that like break up and it's like they hate each other. And that's not uh, my reality, thankfully. Was there a creative awakening? Like, did you always know because the truth is like i i think back to our interactions and one the album that we're going to dive into pretty much track by track is phenomenal so we'll get into it in a second but is there like a creative awakening is there a, a like a a moment of realization that like you're the guy who should be front and center because you weren't before correct me if i'm wrong yeah i played drums and then i played bass uh in the band uh, which was awesome, though. I mean, like, I learned so much from everyone in the band and everyone we got to work with. For me, like, band broke up, and I started producing and writing full-time. I was doing that, and I was, like, enjoying it, but there's just, like, something inside me. I was like, I got to start making my own music. I think I'm finally ready. And um, I remember the day vividly. I called my manager now, Andrew, and my publisher, Sam, and I was like, guys, I- I'm sorry. We got to cancel everything. Like, I just need some time to make my own music. And that was, like, two years ago now, and it's been kind of a roller coaster ever since. How do you come up with the name? Uh, 23 is your age, but does 23 not change? Like, does it not become whatever your age is now? Yeah, I'm, I'm ageless like Daft Punk. No. Uh, <laughs> I was born on the 23rd. So, like, from, like, childhood, it was a number that kind of followed me around. And I knew that I wanted to – like, I didn't want to go by, like, like black piano. You know, I wanted to, like, go by Alexander. It felt like with the kind of songs I aspired and I do aspire to write, it felt like I wanted people to call me Alexander. So – I think it was a nice way for me to kind of combine like, hey, this is actually me, but I also want something that's going to kind of stick out and be a bit more singular. Were you always writing your own music like 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 through Heydays or did that happen only afterwards? I think Heydays kind of gave me the confidence as a writer and like the tool set to start writing my own music like by myself. Like I, I always wrote songs growing up and was obsessed with songwriting, but it was never – something I felt like super confident in. And throughout that experience, I, I mean, through just like meeting super talented people and getting to watch them work and work with them, I finally kind of gained the confidence by the end of that phase to really start diving in on my own sound. What do you take with you that you learn? Because the truth is like in any, you learn from so many things in life, right? But being in a band, being in a group, and being in a position where you make music with other people and you're trying to get it out there, you must acquire some knowledge that you've taken with you because the truth is, like, you're thriving or you're definitely on your way to thriving. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. I feel like being in the band was like – it was like college for learning how to be in the music industry. Like, I just had every kind of, like, stereotypical music industry experience. And there's so much I learned on, like, the business side. But creatively, I think the biggest thing I learned was, like, 
you got to make stuff that you really, really like. It sounds so intuitive, but it's it, it's not, and it can be so tempting to chase stuff. But at the end of the day, like you're going to be the one that has to stand on stage and play the song, so it mm-hmm. should be something that you like wholly agree with and feel. Is this album based on reality, your reality, or is it imagination? Yeah, for me, I have a lot of trouble like writing from like a narrator's point of view. Um, so this it's very personal. Uh, it's very like exact like there's some details in there that like are almost uncomfortable to share but i think once i like feel a little uncomfortable that's when i know i'm like being honest enough and being vulnerable enough is it hard to admit that you cry in the target parking lot (laughs) honestly not that not not as hard as i thought it was gonna be (laughs) freeing in a sense right and in a way you're kind of hoping that other people cry in the target parking lot too yeah we've all been there you know no no shout out target i mean love that place but sometimes you just gotta sit down in the parking lot and see what's really good with your with your heart and your head what triggers that is it like go i have a friend seriously who can't go to certain targets because he went there with somebody he was in a relationship with and now targets ruined for him and when he goes he gets triggered and it's an emotional roller coaster and it's rough no, that's tough. It is. That's a crazy thing about relationships is they they take so much like collateral damage with them. They can take so much away from you, from songs to movies to targets. Like it is an interesting phenomenon and something I'm kind of picking up the pieces uh, still now. Well, I don't want to start at the end, but you did tweet that uh, track nine, the last song on the EP, hurts a lot. Yeah, that's definitely probably the most. I don't want to say most meaningful, but you know, it's probably the most meaningful song I've ever written. Um, and definitely the one I feel like the most connected to. I feel like usually when I write a song, like the songwriting part's the cathartic part, and then after I can kind of just like let it live its own life, and track nine is still one where like if I sit down to play it, it's like a tough one to get through. Why is that? Because it almost seems like you wrote this song hoping a single person would hear it. Yeah, it it is like to one exact single person, um, someone that I you know, cared a lot about and still care a lot about and had a long relationship with um, that was amazing in so many ways and unfortunately ended. And uh, it's, it's kind of like saying like, Hey, like what we had meant so much to me. And if you listen to this EP, you might not think that because I didn't write about it, but it's not that I don't care or didn't care. It's just that I haven't had enough time yet to really like figure out how I feel about everything and, and have enough perspective to, to write about it as eloquently as I would like to. So it's just like, I don't know. I've never really heard like a song with that concept, but it just felt, it felt like the missing piece to the EP. It felt like I, I felt uncomfortable putting it out without some kind of like disclaimer to this person of like, Hey, you know, I'm getting there. It does sound like the album is your perspective on a relationship, right? So, and yeah. I say album, I'm sorry, it's an EP and I don't want to get that mixed up because I understand a debut album is a big deal uh sorry ep yeah no it's all good yeah for for me um it is like one full i like to say like one full rotation around the heart like it's like from like yearning to finding someone to having something to you know breaking the fixing to eventually breaking too much to kind of mourning and then to you know hopefully uh moving on and i think this ep definitely encapsulates all those things in in my life I don't know you yet. It, that's about you, though, yes? or Right? Are you talking about yourself? That's about, that's about like, wanting to, to find someone, like, feeling like, you know, there's kind of a void in you, and uh, you don't know exactly who or what is going to fill it, but you know that there's there's a piece of you that's missing that you don't have yet. But what? what's cool about that song specifically is, like, I know what it means to me, but, like, I've seen so many, like, TikToks, for example, where it's, like, taken on a totally different meaning to someone else, and I'm like, wow, you know, that's obviously not why I wrote it, but... The fact that it can, like, you know, fill that void for you is, is so cool. I, I really, you know, they're selling me for parts. You, you, you say, like, not wanting to be modern art. I mean, if you don't want to be that, what do you want to be? So, yeah, it's funny. Someone just asked me on Twitter about those lyrics because they're, like, they're. I think they're a little bit more, like, uh, like metaphorical than I usually go. I usually go a little bit more lyrical or more literal. Um, But, yeah, it's just lately it's been hard. They're selling me for parts. You're just feeling like. Like you're kind of giving part of yourself, you know, here and part of yourself here. And uh, I think like a lot of modern art can be like almost like minimalist and like just a part of something. And so it's not how I wanted to end up. Like I wanted to like give my full self to, to one person or one thing. And it felt like I was just being pulled in different directions.
how does a record start for you? Are you telling stories based on experiences or are you building to just guitar and do you like jam? Because I know like making music as a band could be different than making music as a person, but you guys are still all creatively connected. Yeah. So for me, um, it's a little bit different every time, but there's definitely like a kind of a pattern that I've fallen into where I usually start with like the concept and the lyrics um, lyrics are just so important to me that like, I know if I get to the end of the song and I don't like the lyrics, no matter how good the melodies are, or the production, I'm not going to want to put it out if I can't stand behind it lyrically. So it's almost like, it's almost like insurance if I start with the lyrics, cause I'm like, at the very least, mm. I'm going to like the song. So I usually start with the lyrics and then I kind of find some, some chords that like feel good and, and make me feel like the kind of theme and thesis of the song and, and just mess around with melody until I find something that also matches that. And then it's kind of off to the races and. I feel very, I like, you know, I've been doing songwriting like long enough where once I have like that seed of like, I have the thesis of the song, I have the, the, you know, harmonic elements that feel nice. Like then I, it's just like, okay, here we go. I'm going to get this one done. Sometimes it's hard to tell if I'm talking to you or to myself. I mean, that's a really, I felt understood by that line. Is that a, well, is that like a hard realization for you to make and then put into a song or how do you even like okay. write that? Definitely. I mean, just like reflecting on, you know, past relationships, it's, you know, in the moment, it's so hard to tell what you need. And then with like, you know, the perspective of, of time, it's so now I can look back and be like, hey, maybe, maybe I was like projecting this onto you and it wasn't fair. You know, maybe like this was something I needed to figure out, you know, from here, not from you. Did you understand that, Daniel? Do you understand love? Uh, no, I'm not good at, at love, so it's, th this is hard. Right. But you learn, right? And, and you, you 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 figure it out. People want to figure it out. Of course, that's. I think that's everyone's goal. Well, most people. Yeah, that's why I called it. Oh no, not again! You know, I was like, because for me, it's like you know, one rotation around the heart, and I was just like, how many rotations do I have to go around before yeah. I find something that is like forever? You know, how many rotations would you say you've gone around? I think I've done, you know, three real rotations, which I feel like is a decent number. You know, um, it's more than two, less than four. <laughs> How many more do you think you have in you? See, that's a good question. And there's a, definitely a song in that. We can co-write that song together. I would, uh, you know? wow. You know, I have so many accolades, not, but uh, the one thing I don't have is a songwriting credit. Uh, uh, can I you mind? Thank you yeah, so much. You know, how, many, you know, how many times can your heart break before it's, you know, uh, you know, it's broken. Yeah, it's broken, truly. Or like you just like give up, you know? Yeah. But then uh, sometimes like you can find that one person that breaks it so freaking intensely, like it's turned into powder. And then mm -hmm. you never love the same way again. True. But I think the other side of that and something I'm trying to keep in mind and, and is that I think I've gone in, around enough times now to like not have that existential dread of like I'll never find someone because mm. I've, I have found someone again. Even though you know, it hasn't worked out. Yeah. But like, that's okay. You know, you gotta like, you know, I think if you think of progress like this, you know, rather than like, you know, steps forward and steps back, like even the steps back are, are still progress towards finding something, you know, eventually. You know, the song that I think describes relationships best, and I'm not a big relationship person, but uh, Come Here and Leave Me Alone, I think describes it perfectly. <laughs> because there's so many things in life, everyone's like, Dan, don't you want to be in a relationship? I'm like, maybe, but I don't want to live with someone. I don't want to share a bed with someone. I don't want somebody being around all the time. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, 10 to 15, maybe 20% would be great, but the other 80%, I'm like, no, I want to be by myself. Love me, but don't get too close. I feel you yeah it's almost like i want like the most selfish form of a relationship i want you like only when i want you which is just like not fair you know yeah. it's like, like that like is not how it should exist but like simultaneously it is what i desire you know like it's a tough balance to strike you know there, there are times when i like so badly want that romantic attention and there are times where i'm like so incredibly grateful to just like be by myself so what is it that you want? Do you want somebody who is understanding of these selfish inflictions and just puts up with it and is like, okay, yes, I am here for whenever you desire. Just ring a bell and I See, will that's, come. That's a double-edged sword because it's like, I don't know if that's a quality I actually want. And I don't think indifference is like a quality I would want in a partner in other settings. So it's like, that would probably be nice in some ways, but in a lot of ways it would probably be like, really difficult to get along with that person mm. see i don't know i'm figuring it out it's tough slow and steady
Yeah, well, yeah. I, like I said, I think that song describes it better than I've been able to describe it in the past. So for now, like if anybody so, ever asks me, I'm just going to say, hey, listen to Come Here and Leave Me Alone. Are you going to send the Spotify uh, link? Yeah, I'll just send him like an yeah. Apple link, a Spotify link. Like, here, listen to this song. Yeah. Alexander 23 I explains it. I love when conversations start just like becoming like sending songs back and forth. That's that's the best type of conversation. <laughs> I feel like that could be a really great way for Dan to communicate his emotions because he's really not that great at it. Yeah, I that's true. Good. How did you come up with this? Were you kind of experiencing what we're talking about and you just had to put it down? Yeah, definitely. I, I was experiencing exactly what we're talking about. And for me, it kind of like was like a, a post breakup haze where like I like, you know, still miss so many aspects of it. But at the same time, I'm so grateful to like have my own space and autonomy over my time. And and it's just a very confusing way to feel and it can change on a dime and it can be simultaneous. And it's just like I, I'm still learning how to kind of live in, in this post breakup world. I thought Caught in the Middle is a very post-breakup song, and I actually have a friend that I'm going to play this one for, too, who is figuring out a dog right now. I may even end up adopting their dog. Um, yes. Wow. Th this oh. is the record where you mentioned the dog, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, great record, really. I mean, are you, are you writing this while you're experiencing it and figuring it out, or only after you figure it out can you write about it? Or do you write yeah, about it to figure it out? This one was... Uh was about like a past relationship that ended like a few years ago that I feel like I'm now just now honestly starting to like really understand how I feel about that stuff. And I think the one positive thing about quarantine songwriting wise, because it was really hard to write during quarantine for, you know, for me at least, but was that I had to like kind of face some stuff from years ago that like I had just been like shoving down and I mm -hmm. finally had to like, think about it. Um, and I was just thinking about that relationship. It's so, sh I mean, it's just so, I mean, it's explains this in the song, obviously, but it's still so strange to me. Like you talk to someone every single day, all the time. And then one day you just like stop talking about them, but like, you still know everything about them. Like you still have all their secrets and all their weird family problems and childhood trauma and all this stuff. But some, then you don't know like the most minute details of their life, like the most boring stuff, like what they ate for lunch. And that's like such a strange paradox to me. Yeah, it's going from like 100 to zero overnight. Yeah. It's a shock to the system. Or you could just not share anything. And then uh, <laughs> then you, you really go from knowing nothing to knowing nothing. That's true. That's what that's the program I'm trying to get on now. Just <laughs> Sharing hold nothing? Hold nothing, yes. <laughs> Why? It, does that come with fame? This want to uh, live a secret hermit-like lifestyle? I don't know. I'll let you know when I get famous. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're on your way. You're, you, I mean, it is crazy. People are listening to your records. Uh, yeah. How do you connect with Jeremy Zucker? How does that come to be? Yeah, Jeremy and I have been just homies for a while, um, but we'd never worked. And he was in L.A. and he just came literally to this room. And uh, I think musically we're, we're very alike, like our processes and to what, the way we think about music, you know, which made it challenging and also easy in a strange way like we're both super particular so when we didn't agree we knew it wasn't right and when we did agree we knew it was right which definitely made the, the songwriting process a bit more streamlined is there a muscle within you that you you try to work at every day because is that you playing guitar on these records mm -hmm. so i mean do you see that as a muscle like as something that you really could i mean you're pretty good at it today like, is it something that you can continue to just get good at? Oh, definitely. Um, I actually took my first guitar lesson since I was like probably 12, like the other week. And it was amazing. I felt so good to like get better at that for the first time in a while. I kind of oscillate with like my guitar skills. Like when I'm on tour, I'm, I am playing so much and it yeah. feels amazing. And then when I'm off tour, I get a little lazier and kind of more play like utilitarian, just like whenever the record needs it. What is that process like? Like, because you're essentially in a position where you have to create something from nothing on the guitar and like, you don't want it to sound like something that already exists. Correct. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it can be frustrating because like my fingers just go to the, to the places they know, you yeah. know, and that's actually why I took the lesson. I was like, I'm so tired of like my instincts, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. And it's like kind of tough though, because like part of that is what makes my music sound like my music. And then the other part of that is like, I want, like, it's almost like a language. Like I want to learn new words. I want to, you know, find out new ways to put sentences together, just kind of in guitar form. 
So I think it's a mix of like doing stuff that feels right to me and that feels stylistically in my world and also, you know, branching out. And I think for me, like the song that branches out the most is, uh, is the song She Loves Me. I was it's just like going to bring that up. It's so good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That for me is like some of my favorite guitar playing I've ever done, at least like on a record. Is it, uh, how does that come to be? Do you start that song knowing that you want to showcase that skill or does the guitar come in after you know the story you want to tell? Um, it came in after, I think just, uh, the chords that the song is over lend itself to some more interesting harmonic choices, uh, Mm -hmm. like guitar solo wise. And so it just was super natural to kind of flex that muscle and push myself uh, in that way for that song. Are you are you producing and writing and doing a majority of all this yourself? Yeah, almost everything on the EP I did by myself. There's a couple songs that I co-wrote um, with a few friends, but other than that, yeah, I, I, no one else produced on the EP besides Jeremy for the song that, that um, we did together. So how many hours a day are you sitting in the studio that you're in right now, would you say? I live in here. I just, this is it. Like, this is, this is like a back house in my backyard. And I just, I call it my morning commute. I walk like 50 feet across the backyard and I just sit in here until my eyes are just closing involuntarily. And then I go back to my house. But no, it depends. I mean, like, some days I'll be in here like all day trying to finish these records and just like banging my head against the wall. And then some days I'm getting better at learning when it's more productive to not be in here. Um, but that's mm. still something I'm kind of figuring out. Well, that's like the life. It's life art balance because you got to leave the back house to live life. So you have something to go back to the back house to yeah. talk about. Well, especially now, I feel like life used to be built into my life. Sounds crazy. But obviously now, like I have to, you know, with COVID and stuff, you have to like seek out life. You have to yeah. find where, whereas I used to just like live, you know, and now I got to like plan out how I'm going to go get inspired, which is like a very strange new obstacle, but I'm, you know, I feel like I'm getting a little better at it and hopefully won't have to do it for too much longer. It's all different now. Yeah. Dude, give me that vaccine. Yeah. I'll say it again. I say it all the time. Put it right in my eye. Just, just get it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Alexander, if Dr. Fauci told me you, Zach Sang, were the only person in, in the world that needed to get this vaccine through his eyes, I'd be like, where are we at, yo? You want to do it? I would it? be lie, dude. I'm I would, ready. Oh, my God. Please. I, I don't care. I just, I, this is, I just, I, I need to be a part of science. I, the, the world should want to be a part of what we're, uh, this, this vaccine, because it is, yeah. I mean, dude, it's like moon landing level type stuff. This is like one of the greatest accomplishments in in history, like, when we're all gone, times a hundred, they'll be talking about. This. Okay. Oh, for sure. This I, is it. Yes. This is it. I, I'm ready for the. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, just pull up and stab me in the arm. I'm ready. Whatever you got, as many doses as you can give me, I'm ready for Dude, it. I'll take it every year if you need. You want to put it in my milk? Uh, just let me know. Milk. <laughs> yeah, put it in the water supply. I don't care. Just <laughs> pull out, play shows, and go to my friends' concerts. I'm cool. You know, like. As long as we can start sitting inside the diner instead of outside in our backyards, I think uh, I'll be a lot happier. It's really amazing to think of all the things that we now genuinely – we used to take for granted. And now it's like, oh, what I would do to just be in a close, uncomfortable restaurant again. Like I used to hate going to restaurants because the tables are so close to people and you'd speak and they'd hear you. I hate it. Yeah. And now that's all I want. It's all I want. And it's crazy. Yeah. Stuff that I didn't even like, I find myself missing. And maybe that part of that is you just kind of romanticize it because you can't have it. Mm. But man, I really do think I'm going to start like not turning down parties anymore. I'm going to start, you know, pulling up and showing up like, like, you know, why not? I just that hope that I still awesome. get invited after all the parties I ditched pre COVID. Honestly, I- that's a fair choice. I feel like you, you know, we've made our decisions and we, we're going to have to live with our mistakes at some point. Yeah. But yeah, like a year ago, I was on tour. It's it's crazy. It still is mind blowing to me how much can just like change like that. You know, obviously it's redundant to say, and it's all we've been talking about for almost a year now, but it's, you know, equally mind blowing to like day one of quarantine. Yeah, but would this project even be a thing if it wasn't for quarantine? No, which I am grateful for. But that's a dangerous game to play too, you know. Like it's that. Like I always kind of, 
I don't know, maybe I'm like too much of a realist, but like even when good things happen, that doesn't mean, and this is going to sound super ungrateful and douchey, but even when like good things happen, it doesn't mean like something else even better could have happened. You know, I feel like we only play that game when bad things happen. Like, oh, this bad thing happened, but if, you know, this and this didn't happen, it could have been good. But I don't know. And that's not to say I'm not grateful because I am. I think as far as like quarantine goes and this whole last year, I've made it out like incredibly well and I'm super thankful for that. But yeah, who knows what would have happened? Yeah, I mean, that's, I wonder what would have been different. Maybe people like to put off the idea of a debut album, truthfully. But like you have nine songs here, so you're pretty close to an album. And, you know, I love Alec Benjamin. Didn't you go on tour with him? Is that who you opened up for? I toured with Alec. First of all, I just saw Alec for the first time in a while in Malibu. We went to the same, like, burrito shack on the PCH. Wow. And I, like, looked over. You know, like, everyone's wearing masks now, so it's kind of hard to tell. And I, like, did a double take. And I was like, Alec? And it was him. And uh, so it was nice to see him and catch up for a bit. What a gift. Uh, yeah, I toured with Alec when I only had one song out. So I was, like, getting up on stage and playing just, like, 30 minutes of unreleased music every night. I remember. But, but luckily his fans were just like incredibly nice and receptive and accommodating. So it was uh, like the best way ever to, you know, start this project. The greatest person. And I felt so bad because I was calling his first body of work an album. But the reality was it was a mixtape and Two Windows uh, was the first album. I think mm -hmm. I got the name right. Hopefully I didn't. If I did, I'll edit it out. But uh, uh, th that was the first album. Why do people want to put off their debut album? Can you just like let me into this this process? Like, I get it. Sophomore yeah. slums scare people out of people, but you're just delaying something that doesn't even need to exist. For me, I think I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I think there's two reasons. One is like my musical heroes. I feel like their debut albums like mean so much to me, and I don't want to like put that onto the universe until I'm like certain about at least a little bit more certain about like who I am and what I want to sound like. And uh, okay. two is I, I still love, like I still feel like the debut album should be like written as an album. And like these songs go together and in a sense, they are all tied together in, in, a, in a lot of ways, but they weren't like written as a project. And for me, when I think of debut album, I think of like, I'm going to write the debut album. Like I'm going to set out to like write a full body of work um, that's going to be presented together. So, full. It's something that you need to embark on, not something that like could just come together by chance because you're creating music. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it feels like like more of like a singular journey than I at least these EPs have been for me, where it's like I'm just consistently writing and and then putting the songs together um, more out of like uh, convenience than anything. So now that the EP is going to be out do you go back to writing instantly and do you know what you're writing for or do you just like make to make? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to start working on uh, some debut album ideas. I mean, that's the goal as the next project is like, you know, more of like a stamp of like, this is who I am. This is what I sound like. Um, and then I'm also working on uh, a couple like collaborations that I'm excited about. I want to go back to the Jeremy Zucker song. Uh, Nothing's the same. I thought it was interesting that there was two men singing about what seemed to be like two sides of a relationship. If I, I mean, again, it's based on perspective. It's art, like it's in the ears mm -hmm. of the beholder. Um, what is that song about, and why two dudes? Yeah, that's interesting you ask because when we got together, like I remember vividly him sitting on the couch and I was sitting on my like you know producer chair, and we were looking at each other like, what can we like authentically write about that both of us are feeling that isn't like. A romantic song that's gonna just feel like contrived and for me the song isn't like romantic at all it's really I mean it's not like about quarantine specifically but it's just like we've both just been feeling so sluggish and so just like beat down by the days blending together that um yeah nothing I mean to quote the song you know nothing's the same as it used to be like it, it really just we were just kind of like bummed and like I think both of us our baseline happiness level is like fairly high and we just like we're not used to to feeling just like such a lack of like stoke for you know life a lack of stoke yeah well when i heard that song it kind of reminded me of like getting older especially the line where you said i uh, used to have fun now we only get together because now when i ever, whenever i get to go home to see my high school friends it's definitely different and we're not out there going to the bars or going to house parties it's like catching up with uh, adults now with kids and families and it's a very strange feeling it's crazy and it, it happens so fast and like 
Yeah. And even, even, I mean, even more in like COVID specific terms, just like the idea of like, you used to like go to a house party with your friends and now like you meet up at a park outside and wear masks. It's not like, you're not like having fun. You're simply like getting together just to like do it, just to like, re- you know, retain some like, like bit of socialization. We're talking before this EP drops. Do you set expectations for releases like this or do you just let it go? I just let it go. You know, like, I, I mean, I obviously have huge, you know, high aspirations and I hope that it's the biggest thing in the world and I hope everyone loves it, but it's kind of liberating to put music out because I've done all I can, you know, like I've, mm. I've written the songs as best I can. I've produced them as best I can. I've gotten them mixed and mastered and I think they sound amazing. And, and now it's not up to me. And I think that's, you know, kind of scary, but in a lot of ways it's, it's super liberating, you know, like everyone else kind of gets to decide, you know, do I feel like this too or not? Uh, scary at all? Yeah, definitely scary. I mean, it's scary for a lot of reasons. One, I'm saying a lot of super personal stuff, you know, and it's always kind of scary divulging, um, that kind of stuff. And, and two, you know, like this is obviously some, it's, you know, I I like making music pretty much more than anything else in the world, but it's also my job. So you want to, you know, succeed in your job and, and have success. And, uh, what is success? Success is so many things. I think first and foremost, success is, is people, um, connecting with the music and feeling more understood. That's like the biggest thing about success. Um, I mean, I think the way, the best way I could contextualize it is like, I want to be like extremely famous, but it's not like I desire like the fame. I desire all the things that like make you famous. You know, I desire like everyone, you know, really connecting with my music and everyone wanting to come and see me play the songs live and connect with them live and stuff. And it's like, if you do all that stuff, you're going to be really, you know, famous and and big, but it's not the fame necessarily that's attractive to me. It's all the stuff that that gets you there. Is it feeling understood? Is it feeling like... Is it knowing that other people feel the same way as you? What fuels it? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's always super validating. It's like, I don't know. Like I'm realizing more and more every day and constantly being reminded of like how not special I am, like in every way, you know, like, cause you go through these things and they feel so personal and singular to you. And then the more I write music and put it out and get the reactions that I'm getting, the more I'm like, Hey, like, Oh, I'm not special at all. These things are happening to so many people in so many different ways. And and I mean that in a good way. Like that that's for me super comforting. You're not special. What do you you have a very devoted fan base. What do you think like what what do they expect from you when you release music? Do you ever think about that? Like what are they looking for? Um it's something I definitely think about. I don't like factor it into my writing process, but because for me, like the writing process has to be sacred. Like it has to be so selfish in a way. But I think what they you know, connect with at least like what's been communicated to me is literally just like the honesty. Like they just appreciate someone who like says it straight, you know, and says exactly how they feel. And and so as long as I'm doing that, I feel like I'm keeping me and them happy. Yeah. Cause whenever you make announcements, I always see people talking about like, here comes the tears, get out the tissues. Yeah. And I think that is because your, your lyrics are very easy to understand and connect with. And I think a lot of people can relate to what you're saying. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was just talking to, like, my mom, and she was like, you know, why are all your songs sad? And I was like, <laughs> that's a good question. And then honestly kind of, like, messed me up for a bit. I was like, why are all my songs? Am I actually this sad? And then I kind of realized, like, I'm not this sad. It's just, like, when you're really happy, you don't need to do anything with that emotion. You could just be happy. That's enough, you know? And when you're sad, that's when you feel the need to do something with it, whether it's write a song or take a walk or make a painting. I don't know. But, you know, for me, it's usually write a song. And so I think that's why a lot of my music ends up being really sad is because like, it's my way of internalizing those feelings and dealing with them. Cry over boys. Um, is that based on reality or is that fiction? Yeah. So that's an interesting one. Cause it's definitely from a different perspective than most of the songs. Um, I started that one kind of like writing about this girl that I knew that this, that, you know, that kind of, uh, cycle was happening to you know and then it's funny because like the more I wrote it the more I got into the lyrics and the farther I got I was like oh wait I'm also writing about you know a cycle that's been happening to me as well and once I kind of saw it through that lens then it became a lot more personal and, and the song meant a lot more to me do you understand uh, yeah personal but also like I mean you can apply it to so many things like you know you could be applied to fandoms you know the idea that people cry over people that they don't know but they know through a song you know yeah 
Totally. I mean, yeah, I think that that's that's a big part of it too. And I think a lot of people have connected with it in that way of just like putting someone like on a pedestal, you know, sometimes unnecessarily at kind of the detriment of your own happiness. Well, yeah, it and seems like, like a, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to keep rambling. So I'm happy you interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's you're here. Speak, not Dan. <laughs> it seems like cry over boys kind of took on a life of its own on a TikTok, and people were really targeting one direction and harry styles yeah no definitely it's something where it's like obviously i never could have like envisioned that when i was writing the song but then i put it out and it that's like the first place they went with it i'm like of course i should have known <laughs> like but i love it it's, it's hilarious i love i love like seeing people use my music on tiktok it always cracks me up there's a lot of great records here. You got to listen to the body of work. It is an EP. It is not a debut album. What is the name? I listened to it a couple of times and I don't even know the name because we, we got like a, a mysterious private link, you know? I love it. Yeah. Keep it mysterious. The yeah. name is uh, Oh No, Not Again. Oh No, Not Again. Oh yeah. No, yeah, Not know. Again. Oh No, Not Again. The cycle. He doesn't want to fall in the yes. cycle for the fourth time. That's right. And how many cycles he has left? How many uh, trips around the heart? We don't know. TBD. Uh, that's for a song for us to write in the future. We'll That's that. right. I mean, dude, I uh, I'm waiting for my my songwriting credit. This is really the accolade that I desire. So, um, anything that I can contribute, let me know. Um, oh, very well. I don't fight for points. I'm a very fair guy. Uh, I'm, Whatever I'm, you think about it. I'm I'm cool all around. Don't worry. And uh, I only have you know just 17 attorneys to work with. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't 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 worry. Okay. I think, Honestly, less than I thought you were going to say. So I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I had, I fired like fifteen of them. It's you know I don't know if you know there's a pandemic going on. Things are a little bit hard. Yeah. Uh, things are uh, please listen to Oh No Not Again. There's a link in the description to the uh, EP. Um, uh, right. Uh, yes. There's also one other question I wanted to ask because I know you like to ask people and it always catches people off guard. Is, uh, what have you been listening to lately? Oh, my <laughs> least favorite question of all time. <laughs> yeah. I've actually been listening to so much music, but like the second someone asked me that, my brain just like shuts down. It's like, we it. know no artists, we know no songs, we know nothing. Um, what have I been listening to lately so much? I've been going back and doing some old Red Hot Chili Peppers records that I haven't mm -hmm. listened to since I was in high school, which has been fun. And then, uh, I mean, I'm always listening to like my, my friends a lot, honestly, like Remy Wolf and Anna Melcher and, and Petey and Maggie Rogers and just people that like, it's so nice for me to like listen to people who I also like see in real life putting in the work because it just like contextualizes it in such a cool way for me. Um, and then I've listened to, I went back and listened to Settle, that Disclosure album, and was just like mind blown. I hadn't done it in a while. It's just so good. So yeah, yeah. and always, always Bad Bunny, always Usher. Those are like my two like go tos if Usher? I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't know why. Okay. okay. Is it weird yeah. listening to your friend's music, like the final product, because you've kind of seen the process of them making it? Do you listen to it differently? Um, Honestly, no. I'm like, you would think I like didn't make music the way I can like <laughs> listen to like, music. I'm like blown away and like astounded. Like, how did he do this? You know, even though I literally sit in here and do the same thing every day, it's like still is magic to me somehow. Cool. <laughs> Daniel, are you fulfilled? Yeah, I learned a lot. The only thing I the only thing I did ha want to ask is I don't know you yet in Cry Over Boys. They're both songs about people you don't know. Is there a connection between them, or is that just a coincidence? When I was writing Cry Over Boys, it felt like a weird like sequel to I don't know you yet. Like it wasn't like intentional, but as I was writing it, I was like, this definitely lives in a similar sonic place and like thematic is like vaguely connected. So it wasn't intentional, but I also you know feel that and hear that as well. Alexander twenty three, thank you for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's great to see you guys. You know, I'm glad we're all still here, still rocking, still doing this. You know, pat ourselves yeah. on the back, hanging Hell in yeah. there. You should be very proud of yourself, man. You've uh, accomplished a lot, and the road is long, and it doesn't end here. And you're making really incredible records. So, really, they, they're you. very unique sounding, but also they sound familiar to me in a way that, like, it's not. It, it's different yet. I understand it, if that makes any sense. Um, the best thing you can say about it, so so it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. It's great to see you guys. Hopefully we, we can hang in person at some point. You know, yeah, for the debut album, please. I would love oh. to have you here, and uh, the couch oh. is ripe for you, my friend. Let's do it. Can't wait.
hey, uh, thank you uh, for hanging out. By the way, listen to the EP. There's a link in the description below. Please. Alexander 23. Oh, no, not again. Hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.